Hey guys, Dark Skeleton here, and since it's still the start of the new season, I was playing some more of that cheesy yet not really competitive uh, AoE mage deck, wh whatever you want to call it. It has stuff in it, like explosive sheep like Doom, say, like, uh, I think there's a flame strike and a blizzard in there as well. I think there's even an arcane explosion. Yeah, there is. Why did I put arcane explosion in it? It's anti-muster for battle. You know, if if someone wanted to donate, like, a Blood Mage Thanos, it might be a little bit more legitimate, because, um, uh, Blood Mage is pretty good, and, you know, it would be like a four-mana, uh, consecration, sort of. Or, or I could just use Explosive Sheep, but no, 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 uh, give me your money so I can go purchase enough packs to get a Blood Mage Thanos. That would be, that would be grand. Meanwhile, did that Shaman really just coin out a totem? I mean, really? <laughs> You know, I could kind of understand coining out a Paladin token if you had a Argent Protector to follow that up, because then you effectively get a Argent Squire for two mana. Um, it's better than nothing. But um, that Taunt Totem is just saying, basically, okay, I'm going to die. Ah, uh, but he has a Flame Tongue Totem. I don't think that was really the best use of it, though, if I'm entirely honest. Uh, those are pretty valuable cards, those Flame Tongue Totems, and to use it just to make a trade... Um, yeah, I don't know about that one. Now, I, I knew that that card is something that, you know, I really don't want to keep on the board just in case. I, I could have definitely just thrown down an explosive sheep there. And, um, in many cases that would have been the better play, but the flame cannon does guarantee that that totem's gone forever. And in this case, let's see, it would have been a 2-2 taunt totem, so... Yeah, it would have changed. It would have turned out the same, but that's entirely fine. I do throw out my explosive sheep now, though. Um, if you want to earth shock that or whatever, I believe the card that's down there as my secret is a spellbender. Uh, so if he was to earth shock it, he would end up earth shocking the spellbender, giving me a uh, one two on the board and keeping my explosive sheep alive. One of the few cases where Spellbender is technically better than a uh, counter spell. Um, still not going to be used in really any serious decks, I think. Uh, my Explosive Sheep puts in some work being able to trade into that uh, zero 01 totem, take it out. And uh, he has a 4 5 Yeti on the board, but I still have a Spellbender. The thing is, um, if he only has one spell to counter that Arcanist, such as, say, a Hex then that's not going to work at all. And you know, on top of that, that means I get a I get a taunt to block his yeti, so even if he had another flame tongue totem, it wouldn't matter. Uh, the only thing that could really stop that at this point would be double lightning bolt, a well-placed crackle, or a earth shock, which would just make it a 3-2, not exactly kill it. So, Spellbender actually came in useful there, uh, one of the few times, because often... It's not that great. Sometimes it even screws you over. Uh, it, it just really depends, and it's... Mm, it's a questionable card, at best. But the thing is, I like to play it. Um, it's This deck is mostly for fun. It's clearly not supposed to be anything competitive. I mean, what deck runs Doomsayer and Ethereal Arcanist in combination? Um, aside from random stuff I throw together, I don't think I've ever seen that. <laughs> Not once. So, uh, unfortunately, he does have the Wolf Rider in his hand. Take out my uh, Ethereal Arcanist. Uh, I can't actually remember what that secret was. Was that another uh, Spellbender right there? Oh, no, no, no. That was the Vaporize, I think. Oh, whatever. Uh, he puts down an Iron for Grizzly. I am happy to take that trade with my Explosive Sheep. Put down a counter spell. Basically, make my second Ethereal Arcanist impervious to... Uh, just about anything he'd want to do, unless he was uh, wise enough to burn a spell like a uh, Totemic Might or an Earth Shock and then hex it. It's going to be hard to get at that uh, Ethereal Arcanist. And this is one of the cases where, hey, it works out pretty decently. And something I've been thinking a little bit about is that uh, Flare got nerfed uh, hard enough that I don't think I've seen a Hunter play a single Flare. Uh, ever since pre-Goblins um, vs. Gnomes. So that means if you want to play a secret deck that just has like three, four, five secrets on the board at the same time, then that's a lot safer now because Flare was really the only hard counter to that. And now that that's gone, um, no one runs Kazan Mystic, not in Constructed. I, I occasionally see it in Arena Mode. But yeah, uh, without any counters to secrets, 
mm, something to think about. Of course, naturally, not all of the secrets are really that great. Ice Barrier, I don't think I've seen that for a while. Why would you play it when you can just antique heal bot? Uh, Ice Block is good, but it only belongs in certain decks. And would that same deck also be running cards like uh, Mirror want? Entity, Counterspell? Yeah, well, actually, in my mind, yes. So if you wanted to play a stall secret stack, um, could kind of work. I, I know that's sort of what the giant decks do with the duplicate, and you I think they also run the Mirror Sunwell. Entity, don't they? Then they play Echo of Medivh, they get tons of giants in their hand, uh, they get more giants after they clone them, and then it's just, it's a nightmare. You're not going to have a good time versus that deck. So uh, this field is actually the perfect setup for my Doom, I mean Explosive Sheep combo. Uh, I just ping the 2, or 4-2, Frost Wolf Grunt. Why would you? Well, yeah, it's another basic deck. It's it's to be expected. These are not people who were just uh, bumped down to rank 20. These seem like people who actually may have been rank 20 before the season ended. In which case, in which case, if they've climbed up to rank 20 with decks like this already, they must have been playing like all day or something like that. Ready, sir. So this guy throws out more minions. Um, I hope he's read what my card actually does. I do have an explosive sheep there, which my is like an on-demand consecration. I could understand if he was going to earth shock it, uh, but what he just did is set up his entire board minus the 5-5 five five to basically die to my explosive sheep. And I think I know why he did it. It's so that he could, after it becomes his turn again, have at least one minion that can contest my Ethereal Arcanist. Looking at my hand, actually that's the case. There's uh, nothing I can do about it. The Ethereal Arcanist will die. I, I could trade it in myself, but, I mean, what's the point, really? Uh, I'm not too worried about that, though, because my Explosive Sheep did get, like, a, what, uh, five for one? <laughs> it's actually a pretty good card, I gotta say. Uh, unfortunately, my 11-5 Ethereal Arcanist bites the dust, but not before causing some, uh, Behold, I'd say, big problems for my opponent. Interestingly, he has a Stormwind Champion, a Vine Arena card, uh, constructed, um, like back when I was making my basic deck videos, yeah, I, I would recommend putting Stormwind Champion inside of your deck. So, does this guy only have basic cards then? Or maybe he's a smurf or something like that. I, I, I just don't know if I could see, um, like, a, a complete noob who only has the basic cards and has never really played the game getting up to rank 20 this quickly inside of the same day. So, I don't know what's up, but running into these people who really are playing with just the basic cards and... You know, on, on one hand, that's respectable. If he actually manages to take some wins with that, I, I think that's a lot more pr impressive than when you have a collection of legendaries and epics and you can throw whatever cards you want into the deck that I, I more or less can because I've been playing for a while. So uh, here, uh, it might not be very intuitive to throw that Doomsayer out in really anybody's mind, but the thing is, I don't really have an answer to that Stormwind Knight, as funny as that is. Uh, this deck didn't actually have that much card draw. I'm not even running Arcane Intellect. Uh, so I just wanted to guarantee that I could take out his Stormwind Champion and make sure that I get to choose board control next turn uh, with whatever I try to play. Hopefully I draw into something a little bit better than a Kirin Tor Mage onto a empty board without a Secrets. So... Uh, I realized at some point that he had a Wind Fury in his hand during his turn, but I, I'm safe because I have a counter spell, which basically means he did that in the wrong order, and uh, now he's going to give me a free Die Wolf Alpha. And not ideal. Yeah, he kills my Sludge Belcher outright, but I mean, that was going to happen anyway. It's not like he was going to leave it in its 3 5 form to become a free 1 2 after Doomsayer proc. And uh, now he's going to pay the consequences from Doomsayer. Not so great. I mean, he pointlessly makes a totem there. I, I guess it's just because, hey, I can. Uh, look at me, I'm more powerful because I make a totem that's going to die instantly. Honestly, though, I do the exact same thing. Like, in the arena run, where I had an abomination, I made a 1-1 one, one token, even though I knew 100% sure that abomination was going to die and blow up my token anyway. So, I, if you have the mana, you might as well press the button. 
So I do draw into Galvin back a Torque, which is not too bad, uh, considering he has two cards in his hand. Quite likely no response to that chicken, which means I could be drawing three cards. Not that I really need them to finish the game, but if that happens, it does definitely seal the deal. Uh, he throws down a Raid Leader. I, I, I kind of see where he was going um, with this basic deck, uh, trying to have a lot of minions on the board or totems on the board and then to buff them up with flame tongue totems and also some uh, raid leaders um but that's not really going to work if your board is constantly getting controlled like this uh, drawing into an acolyte of pain of course means i can just play around and draw more cards it it's really irrelevant what i do at this point so the Sludge Belcher does come out, which is probably a big problem for him. I mean, uh, a Shaman that has an empty hand, all he has left is totems, no draw power. Um, I, I'm guessing he doesn't have any Fire Elementals or Azure Drake stuff that you would normally see in a solid so Shaman deck. So uh, really, unfortunately for him, it's pretty much over, but it, it's rank 20. You can't lose stars anyway. And I suppose that makes two for two with my cheesy AoE mage deck, new meta? I think not! <laughs> this deck is not that good. Not by a long shot. So I've been Dog Skeleton, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.